Okay, so in this video, we're going to be looking into a, a, a rather popularly used encryption system known as the attribute based encryption systems. And basically, this comes under the umbrella of uh, a broader category of encryption, which is known as IBE, which is identity based encryption systems. Uh, and this is a, a concept of functional encryption in the field of cryptography there are two kinds there is functional and non-functional and basically ibe comes under functional encryption and ab is a concept of ibe okay so before we understand what attribute based encryption system actually is it is very important to actually first understand how public encryption system works so let's just go ahead and take a quick example and see how public encryption systems work okay so let's say you have two users right user one and user two okay and user one is a friend of user two. They're both using the same messaging app. Let's say, for example, they're using WhatsApp or something like that. And they want to transmit their messages to one another in a safe and secure manner. So what is it, what's gonna happen here? The user one is gonna type a message. Let's say, for example, hello world, okay? And he wants to send this message to user two. But in order to do this safely, it is very important that user one encrypts this message, right? And basically turns it into some random characters and user two decrypts this message and receives it in exactly this format, okay? Without the loss of any data. So the way that public encryption system works is basically user one and user two both have two keys, okay? And the first is the public key and the private key. Okay, let's just call it PRK. And similarly, user two has a public key and a private key. Okay, so what's gonna happen is user one is going to use the private key of user one and the public key of user two in order to encrypt this data. Okay, and if this is confusing, let me just go ahead and elaborate a little bit more. So what happens in a basic encryption system is that firstly, let's just say you have this message and you want to encrypt it. The way it's going to work is you'll have something known as an ID first of all, okay? And the ID can be two characters or four characters. Basically, it's gonna be something like, uh, for example, let's just take A, B, seven, six, or something like that. Now, this is just an example uh, of random keys, okay? Let's just call this ID, okay? And then it's gonna have something known as a salt, okay? And the salt is nothing but a basic um, random numbers or, or random characters which are added into the text uh, in order to make it a bit more confusing and in order to make the encryption a bit more harder to crack. So let's just say we add some characters and let's just say this is a 256 bit encryption system which means it's gonna have 256 characters in this encryption. So let's just say uh, it's gonna be something like M, X, C, 7, 6, so on and so forth until how much ever it is sort that you wanna add. So let's just say K, okay? And let's just say this is about 100 characters of salt. Okay, so you have four characters, so you have 100 characters here, and then you add uh, whatever uh, bits are left is basically gonna be the actual encryption of this message. So let's just say that is N, X, C, four, zero, so on and so forth until K, for example. And this is your actual encrypted message, okay? And so basically this is how an encryption system would look like. Okay, this is how an, uh, a, crypt a cryptid message would be. And so when it comes to the public key, what's gonna happen is, instead of adding any random numbers or random characters to your salt, what you're going to be doing is, you're gonna be encrypting this data using the private key of the user one and the public key of user two, okay? And that's basically what's gonna be added over here. And then you have the hello world message, which is gonna be added over here, okay? In an encrypted format. And then this message is gonna be sent from user one to user two. Okay, let's just call this MSG. So the message is sent from user one to user two. However, this is in an encrypted format, so the user just cannot directly uh, read the message. So what user two is gonna do is basically, it is going to tally its public key with the sort that we've added here. And since the user two has, uh, user one has already added the public key of user two in the sort, and since they both tally, what's gonna happen is this message is going to get decrypted and user two will be able to read it. The same process is gonna happen for user one. So if user two wants to send a message, it's basically gonna use its private key and the public key of the user that it, that is the intended recipient and it's going to create a message, okay? 
let's just call it hello back okay and it's going to use uh, the same method right here okay and in the place of salt it's basically going to add the public key of user 1 and the private key of user 2 it's going to encrypt it using that and basically that is going to take this message in an encrypted format to user 1 while user 1 receives the message it's going to use its public key to decrypt the message and get this message right here hello back okay now that we have covered what public encryption system looks like let us go ahead and try to understand what attribute based encryption system actually is so as you can see right here we have the salt which is the which is the compilation of nothing but the public the private key of the user one and the public key of user two instead of doing this what we are going to be doing in attribute based encryption system is that we are going to be using some attributes of user two and encrypting them and using them as salt instead of using the private key and the public key so here is what the message is probably going to look like so let's say user two has some attributes okay and uh, let's say those attributes are for example the, he belongs to the country of india okay and he's 23 years of age and he's a male and let's say his birthday is 5 6 1994 okay these are some of the attributes of user 2 which we are going to be using to encode the data okay so let's just say for example these attributes can be symbolized as a b c and d okay what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using these attributes and create what is known as an access policy okay and the access policy is going to look something like this so when the user receives the message in an encrypted format if the message consists of a and c which means it, it has the attributes A and C or it has the attribute D okay it has the attribute D which is this right here then decrypt the message however if it does not match this policy then do not decrypt the message and stop right here okay so basically what's going to happen is when the user receives the message the decrypted message it's going to take the salt from that message and it's going to apply this access policy on it. So it's going to see if the attributes A and C exist in the salt. If they actually exist in the salt, then the message is going to get encrypted. Sorry, decrypted. Or if the attribute D exists in the salt. So if D exists in the salt, then definitely the message is going to get decrypted. If this access policy does not match, however, for example, if the user has the attribute B, okay, in its private key, and it uses this B attribute in its private, or sorry, its public key, and it uses this attribute B to decrypt the data, it's going to fail because this access policy that is defined right here does not match the protocol, okay? It does not match the user data. So let's just say the user has the data A, B, D in its public key. Let's say user 2 has this data and this access policy is applied to it. Will the data be decrypted? It has A, B and D, right? So the first part of the first rule of the access policy is that you need to have at least A and C. Okay. It does not have C right here. So this access policy fails. However, there's another provision in this access policy that says if this does not exist, then check for just D. And right here we have D and D matches with D right here. So basically the data of birth which is encrypted in the public key of the user 2 also exists in the sort. And therefore, this is going to tally and the message is going to get decrypted. That is the basic concept of attribute based encryption system. So let's, uh, so let's take it uh, a step further and understand the two major categories in which attribute encryption system is divided. Attribute based encryption system is divided into two categories, which is CPABE. And KPABE. Okay. And this is basically nothing but a ciphertext policy, 
all right and this is nothing but key policy okay so it is very easy to understand these two things if you basically understood what was going on over here so what's going on over here is that you are creating what is known as an access policy right here okay let's just take a fresh page okay so the access policy that we had created was a and c or d okay this was our access policy that we had created now in ciphertext policy what's going to happen is we are going to be using this access policy okay which is created at the end at the user end and what we are going to be doing is we are going to be taking these attributes right here and we are going to be creating the ciphertext using these attributes okay so let's say for example we take the attributes a and b to create the ciphertext so user 1 wants to send the message to user 2 and it's using the attributes a and b okay a and b are the attributes that the user 1 has created in order to decrypt the data now will user 2 be able to decrypt the data using this access policy right here that's the question okay so what's going to happen is basically in ciphertext policy we are creating an access policy which is universal for both user 1 and user 2 okay and we are taking some of the attributes and we are encoding them into the encryption system which is a salt right here okay so will this uh, message which is encrypted with the attributes a and b be decrypted right here so let's go ahead and look at the rules of the access policy rule one is we have a and c it does not have a and c so rule one does not apply okay rule two is that it should at least have the message d rule two does not apply either because we only have a and b Therefore, this message is not going to get decrypted by user 2. User 2 will never have access to this message because A and B attributes are not enough to decrypt this message. Similarly, if user 1 had encrypted the message using, let's say, D, then rule 2 would apply because rule 2 says at least D needs to exist in the salt and it does. Therefore, user 2 will now be able to decrypt the message because it has been encrypted using the D attribute, which in this case was the date of the user. So what is basically happening in ciphertext? Just to summarize, what's happening is the user is basically creating an access policy, okay? And then it's using some of the encrypted text, uh, some of the uh, some of the access points that we had created, such as A, B, C, and D in the universe, and it's using those to encrypt the data. And if the user is fine, if the user when he, the user receives the message, if he is finding these uh, rules uh, tally with the encrypted text, then he's getting the message, or else he's not. So what is the benefit of ciphertext policy? Let's say you don't have user one and user two, you have user three, four, five, all the way until user n. The benefit is going to be that, basically, since you have many users, multiple users, what you can do is you can create a universal access point, right? A universal access policy, okay? And you can use uh, different, different access points for different users in order to get the encrypted data. So what's gonna happen is multiple users can access the same data at the same time, uh, if they tally with the access policy that has been defined for this particular encryption system. Okay, so it can be used for n number of users at the same time. This will be very, very efficient if you're using uh, a public uh, a public platform in which you have multiple users. So ciphertext policy would definitely work for that. Now the key policy is nothing but the reverse of what was happening here. Instead of encrypting the data using the attributes, of the user, you're going to encrypt the data using the access policy, okay? You're going to define the access policy in the encryption of the data itself, okay? And then you're going to use some of these attributes to decrypt the data, basically. So what's going to happen is instead of encrypting the data using A, B or D or something like that, you're going to use this access policy right here and you're going to use this itself to encrypt the data. So the message is going to look, is going to look something like this, there's going to be an ID followed by the salt, which is going to be the access policy, which has been defined right here. And then you're going to have the actual encrypted text. And what the user is gonna do is it's going to use all the attributes that it possibly has, which in this case is A, B, C, and D. And it's going to apply different variations of it in order to see if the access policy is satisfied. If the access policy is satisfied, then the message is going to be delivered, or else it's not going to be delivered. And that's basically how the attribute-based encryption system works uh, using the ciphertext policy and the key policy that we have. I hope this explains uh, the concept clearly.